Hello, welcome to a new calculator tutorial for the TI-84+. Plus. Today we'll be discussing how to code the PPMC table into your calculator for ease of use. The PPMC table, or Pearson Product Moment Correlation Coefficient table, is used to determine if a calculated correlation coefficient is absolutely large enough to determine a linear correlation or linear relationship between two variables, useful for bivariate data. In this tutorial, I will be working with a 0.05 level of significance, although you may adjust the program to fit your needs. Okay, so the first thing we're going to want to do is obviously create a program. So we're going to be using this button here, PRGM. If we hit program, very likely you'll see a blank screen like I do here. If you do have values here, then that's because your teacher has given you programs or you made your own in the past. Here we're going to be making a new one. So I'm going to scroll over to the right to new. So I have an option here that says create new. And we're going to hit enter on that. All right. So first thing we want to do is name this program. And we want to give it a name that will be recognizable. So that's years or months in the future, I will know what this program does simply by the name. I don't want to call it just program one or A or something similar to that. Since this is going to be working with the critical values for the coefficient or the correlation coefficient, let's do a crit coef, something similar to that. In the alphanumeric, if you see already, it says name with an A. That means I can use all the letters here that are in green for my calculator. Perchance another color, depending on what calculator you're working with. But I'm going to do C R I T C O E F. And that gives me my, uh, as long as I can name a, uh, an entire program. You can only use eight characters, so you can't go too long. So crit coefficient tells us enough of what the program is supposed to do. Hit enter, and now it's going to ask us to actually write the program. Now this might be scary if you haven't done any programming before, but this is going to actually be pretty easy. It should only take about six lines of code. Now to access the first line, we want to actually hit program again. Yes, we're going to hit program while in the program. When we hit program, we get a different screen that shows up, not a list of executables. Here we have a list of options to put into our program, if, then, else, for, while, etc., etc. These are all things that people that have done programming should be well familiar with. However, what we want to do first is go over to the I.O. tab, and we want to use the letter or the number 2 option, which is prompt. If we hit enter on that, we have prompt with a flashing letter at the end of it. This is going to be the prompted value, so the value that I'm going to give the program to actually work with. In this case, what we want to do, just like when we use the table, we're going to give it a value of n, the number of values in my data set. Now this is not the degrees of freedom value, we will change that later. So here I'm going to do n for my number of values. Okay, now that we have that set up, what we want to do now is actually work with the degrees of freedom. To calculate degrees of freedom, it's pretty simple calculation, it's just n minus 2. So I do n, and I subtract 2. And again, this is supposed to be my degrees of freedom, so I'm going to store that into another letter that is easy for me to understand for that. I'm going to store it into a letter D for degrees of freedom. This way, if I go back through the program, I have an idea of what's happening here. If I hit enter again, we have two lines down. We have only four more left. Now, the next one is the probably the most important one, and that's the inverse of the t distribution function. To access that, we're actually not we're going to hit this button VARS, but we want to access the functions that are in DISTR in the distributions. So to access that, we hit second. VARS, and we have these options available to us. Normal PDF, normal CDF, inverse norm, inverse T, TPDF, TCDF, all these for different types of distributions. Now what we want to access is the fourth option, the one that says inverse T. So we go down to four or hit the number four and hit enter. Now what we want here, what you'll likely see is a cleared version of this. So. I'll see, uh, okay, it's going to want me to put in a value for area first. So for area, I'm going to put 0.975, 
And for degrees of freedom, we already calculated that and put into letter D, so I'm going to put the letter D here. To put in the letter D, because it doesn't ask for numeric, letter D is right here for x to the negative 1, so alpha D. And that should work just fine. If you do not have a wizard show up like this, some 84s and all 83s do not have the wizard for this, what you'll see instead of is this line when you hit inverse T in the distributions option. You'll see inverse T with an open parenthesis. So you're going to want to type in 0.975 comma D. Now I stated before that I'm using a degrees of freedom, or I'm using a significance level rather, of 5% or 0.05. We're going to show how to change this once the tutorial is done, depending on what course you have. However, this, this is going to be my T distribution value, so I'm going to store it into the letter D, or the letter T. Now this might seem kind of odd to some as why we are doing this, but essentially what we are doing is reverse engineering the formula to calculate the t-distribution values, uh, which involves a lot of square roots and a lot of values for r. What we're trying to isolate is our r value, the critical value itself. So the next thing we want to do, that's the most complicated line, what we want to do next is we want to square the value that we just got, this t value, so I go, so it hits alpha 4 to get t again, and I'm going to want to square that, so I hit this x squared button. Or you could use a caret if you so please. After that, we want to divide it by our degrees of freedom, by our letter d. Now this doesn't really have a necessarily, like a name necessarily, so I'm just going to call it x. I'm going to store that into the letter X. So we've done a few calculations and we have one last calculation to do. The last one we need to do is a big old square root. So we want to access the square root button up above the X squared, which is in blue. So I hit second X squared. And I want to take my value X and divide that by X plus one. To do that, I want to hit X divided parentheses, this is important, parentheses x plus 1. If you do not have the parentheses there, the order of operations will take over. It will do x divided by x, give you a value of 1, and then it will add 1 again. So you have to make sure you have the parentheses here. I close up the bottom parentheses so the entire denominator is done, and then one more parentheses to close up the overall square root. Now this will give us our final answer that we want, so I'm going to store that into a letter A for answer. So that's five out of six lines. The sixth and final line is the one that helps give us our actual answer. If I left it at as it is right now, it would calculate an answer, but it wouldn't tell me what the answer is. So what I need to do is I need to do program again, which is where I got prompt. So I hit program, I see the CTL, CTL and IO options. I go over to IO and I want to hit DISP, which is either display or dispense. It should be display, though, for display or display graph, display table. We just want the third one for simple display. This will take our answer and we'll paste it to the main menu for us. So we hit display, and the thing we want to display is that letter A. So we do display A. With that, we are done with the program. In a few lines, it's not too long. Uh, if, and if you want to spruce it up and make it do more fancy things, uh, then you can. Uh, but this is pretty simplistic in terms of just accessing the value from the critical values of correlation coefficient table without actually pulling that table up. So here what we need to do to do a little bit of a test. I'll quit out of the program. It already saved. Any line that I write in there is automatically saved, so don't worry about that. And what I want to do is test a value. Now, according to the table, if I have 10 values or 8 degrees of freedom, I should get a value of 0.632. Again, this is with a 0.05 significance. However, if I run the program, so I go to program, and now I have crit coefficients in my executables. So I hit enter on that. Has it on the main screen now. It's pasted. I hit enter one more time to actually run it. I'm going to test what I get if I plug in the number 10. Again, if we are right, we should get a value of about 0.632 with rounding. So I hit enter, it takes a couple seconds, and I get 0.6318, which does round to 0.632. So 
So that's all well and good. If I want to run the program again, I don't need to hit program again because it's the last thing I did. So I can hit enter one more time. And it will run the program once more for us. And all I need to do is test another value. Let's do 15. If we are right, we should get a value of 0.514 with rounding. So if I test 15 values in my data set, I should get 0.5139, which rounds to 0.514. Wonderful. The program works exactly as intended. Now, this is how it is for the class that I personally teach. My statistics course only uses a single... Uh, column and we assume a level of significance however depending on your course you might want to adjust the level of significance used to test the correlation coefficient so we're going to input one extra line in our program in order to do that for us so we're going to go back to my program and go over to edit this way i can edit the already made program i don't need to make a new one so everything here is as it was what we're going to want to do, however, is we're going to want to prompt a new value, which is going to be the level of significance. So I want to make a new line here. To do that, I hit this insert button, which is above delete. So second, delete. And you'll see my cursor has become an underscore. Now this will insert any open value here, and it will push the n-2 store d, and it will push it over. However, if we just hit enter instead, it will move it down a single line. Okay, now I can go up to that line. My cursor has returned back to normal once I've gone up to that new line. And I'm going to want to prompt a level of significance. So I hit program again. Scroll over to I.O. And use the prompt option. Now again, we want to use the level of significance. So let's use a letter that makes sense for that. Perchance, L. That would be good. Okay. Now, that level of significance is going to change this 0.975 value. That's the only numeric I use other than this 1 or that 2. But this 0.975 is coming away from the uh, 0 0.05 significance. And we got that by taking half of my significance level away from 1. So that's what I'm going to put in here instead. I'm going to delete 0.975. And now I'm going to hit second, insert. Now again, my cursor has changed. Anything I type in now will insert itself between the parentheses and the comma. So what I want is one minus alpha, parentheses to get L, divided by two. This way, if you're using 0 0.05 significance, 0 0.01 significance, or God help you, 0 0.10 significance, then you can adjust the formula as necessary. And the rest of the program runs exactly as intended. So let's test it now with its new changes. Let's quit out. Clear this. And let's do program crit coefficient. Run it. And let's again test the value that we've done before. Let's do n value of 10. So I have 10 values in my data set. And after I hit enter on 10, it then asks me what the level of significance is. So it's not going to run the rest of the program until I get this. So in this case, let's do what we did before, 0 0.05. Now if I hit enter, I should still get 0.632 as I did before. You can also do this for any other level of significance. Maybe you have a level of significance of 0 0.01. You put that in instead, and you get a different value. All right, that does it for this program tutorial. Uh, I hope this was able to help you. Uh, I suggest if you got stuck on any steps, please rewind and pause at any moment to make sure that you're following along. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments, or if you're one of my students, feel free to talk to me. Have a good day.